Welcome to Decrypt, Asia's first blockchain and cryptocurrency podcast. I'm your host, Tushar. Each week, we take a deep dive into the Asian blockchain scene with investors, technologists, and industry insiders. Go to decrypt.asia to subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Telegram to join in the discussions. Welcome to the show, Nedrick. Yeah. Thank you, Tusha, for inviting me. Could you give our listeners a quick introduction? Tell us about your background and how you got involved in the blockchain and cryptocurrency ecosystem. Yeah, so um, I uh, spent uh, my uh, uh, you know the study in Singapore, and then I uh, spent around four years there in the game industries and e-commerce um, in one of the biggest um, 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 company in uh, South Asia, um, and then. Um, I started investing in uh, cryptocurrency around 2016 um, when, you know, I, um, people start talking about, I, my friends start talking about cryptocurrency. I, I, I find this is something interesting um, to put some of my investment uh, in it. Um, however, I, I only really study the, uh, like the technology behind uh, the cryptocurrency, which is the blockchain technology, um, only last year. 2017 and also that's the, my time that's the time when my friend actually um, talked to me about the idea of uh, building a, a, a company about the uh, about gaming um, in the with using blockchain technology which is uh, the project I'm working right now um, and the technology actually uh, triggered me um, a lot since um, I, I see that there's a lot of potential uh, that how how the blockchain technology can change many industry um, potentially, um, especially the gaming industry, which I'm um, quite familiar with. Um, so um, I think this is something really potential. So I um, decided to, to leave um, the job um, around early this year, 2018, and then um, join the company with my friend uh, and building uh, the game called Ethermon. And um, fortunately, that uh, the games pick up and uh, received uh, by the uh, community quite well. And um, now we're here and building more product uh, at the moment. So you mentioned Ethereum on. Could you tell us a little bit more about this game? Yeah, so we, um, we started out, um, actually the company started out in December 2017, uh, right after the CryptoKitty craze um, in around November. Um, and what we, we, we see in CryptoKitty is that uh, it, we are very surprised that people, um, you know, like um, pick up the idea of uh, collect digital assets um, and uh, they, are, they are treasure the uh, scarcity of the assets that blockchain technology can protect. So we think that uh, actually we, we can do something more than CryptoKitties. Um, so we, we base on the idea of Pokemon games because we all uh, born in the nineties, and we all love the Pokemon games. And since that, we we know this this the the game concept that everybody love. Um, so we we build a product around that concept about collecting monsters. Uh, but what we did uh, more than CryptoKitty is that we 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 already planned from from the start that we should have um, a a real gameplay um, like uh, the battles. Um, like um, an adventure mode, like people go around in the game uh, and then uh, collecting stuff and uh, you know do all each other. Um, so we we started out um, with very simple gameplay that allowed people to collect monster like Pokemon. Uh, our monster are actually um, very much inspired by Pokemon design. Uh, so you can see that in Ethermon, the monster style is, is uh, something that you know like influenced a lot by Pokemon game and people can easily relate to that uh, concept. Um, and then uh, a few months later, after our pre-sales of the uh, digital assets of the monster, we start building uh, the, a lot of features around the, 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 the core, which is the monster. So now we already have around four game modes, including um, like a gym for people to train, um, the battle game mode, the rank system for people to play competitively and uh, also the adventure mode where people can um, you know like send their monster around the 
uh, Ethermon walls to collect uh, different stuff and collect rewards and trade with each other. Um, and we are continuing to build uh, a lot of features um, around the monsters to, you know, like to um, cater to different types of, um, of players. And also, uh, as the game develops, um, we will need more of the like we need to add to the dynamic of the gameplay uh, for for to you know satisfy our users. Okay, so I mean, taking a step back, let's go through sort of the journey of the people who want to play this game. So if I want to buy some mons and I, like I'm just starting out, I go to your website and I can start playing the game, right? Yeah, so basically um, you need some uh, cryptocurrency, which is um, to be specific, is will be you need some ether yep. uh, to play the game. Um, yep. Since um, most of the games are, um, you know, like built on top of blockchain, um, people will need to interact with smart contracts or their assets in the store on blockchain on the Ethereum network. Um, so every time that you uh, want to um, get a monster, so you want to sell them out to other players or you want to, uh, you know, like update the status in terms of, you know, level up or uh, evolve the monster to a, a higher form. You always need to interact with a smart contract that we built and um, which you, you will always need to pay a, a transaction fee uh, in, in, in gas fee. Um, and this is actually required uh, for all the transactions on the Ethereum network. Uh, so you need to have cryptocurrency and um, our currently how to play the game is actually uh, quite different from all the traditional games not view um, on uh, you not not view on, on top of, of blockchain technology um, since you need some uh, bridge to help you um, interact with a smart contract and um, most of our players are now playing on desktop they use some application called MetaMask um, which will help to store your wallet um, and help you to make transaction with a smart contract. Um, on mobile, you can also do it with some um, mobile browser or help, which actually do the same thing as the MetaMask. Um, um, however, to be honest, this user experience is, is not really optimal at the moment uh, since to people who, who are very new to blockchain technology and who only do trading, MetaMask, and other application that uh, help you to to use the uh, decentralized app or or DApps. Um, actually, some some uh, very new concept, and it really requires some of the uh, learning uh, from user. So, um, user acquisition is um, something that we need to crack at the moment. However, it's uh, like um, if we have like uh, a, a well built um, incubation process, then it will work out. So I saw on your website that you can also mine your token, which is called the eMont token by playing the game. To, could you talk a little bit more about this mechanism and about the eMont token in general? Yeah, so um, we, we uh, create an eMont token, um, which is the ERC20 token on, uh, the, uh, based, on it, it, based on Ethereum. Um, why we create this is actually that we we want to we have a long term vision of building more product um, for 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 the company, um, not just one game like Ethermon. Uh, currently, we are in process of, of doing so by um, expanding uh, the uh, product pipeline uh, for the company, and um, our vision is to to have all the product using the same tokens. Uh, to facilitate trading and increase the liquidity of the tokens, and with all, uh, since if we, once we have the you know like ownership of tokens, we can do a lot more, and we have we we can be you know like in control of what we we, we can build and also the market and how how we want it to grow. Um, the Iman tokens actually have a cap of twenty million tokens. Um, we we haven't done any ICO for for the token at all. Uh, what we um, uh, are doing a token is, is that when player uh, play the game or use our products, they can be rewarded with the tokens, and the token can actually be spent back in our products, uh, so they can reproduce values as they play. Um, one, once we add more products, people like who use one product, they can actually easily 
uh, ship to, to other product using our own tokens um, to spend in a new product. And, uh, you know, like they can acquire more values from, from those new products. So that's what uh, we are uh, thinking of uh, what, when we, we build that token. Okay. And I saw something very interesting. As part of your roadmap, I saw that you guys will be launching uh, Ethereum on uh, VR world on decentral land. Could you tell our listeners a little bit more about this and how this will work exactly? Yeah, so um, we has partnered with uh, Decentraland um, in a very stage when we build a game. Um, what we see um, and, and, and why we come together and, and form the partnership is that both projects actually focus on gaming and see that um, gaming is actually um, what will drive the adoption for the blockchain technology. Um, and um, Decentraland uh, are a, a, a space, they are building a space um, to help the game builders bring their, their asset in their game uh, and build on VR um, much easier than, uh, you know, like use other technology or build a VR world them, themselves. Um, how it will work in, uh, on Decentraland uh, for Ethereum One and other games uh, of our um, product pipeline is that um, we, will, we actually have started you know, working with Decentraland and uh, build a 3D uh, models of all our monster that we have at the moment and uh, tested out like how they interact in the uh, Decentraland environment. Um, at the moment, we, we already have a demo of the 3D battles of uh, monsters in Decentraland and uh, we have tried putting our monster around in the Decentraland world in, in, in the testing versions and um, we already share with our users like how they see it. Um, in the Decentraland world. So basically what you can imagine is like uh, people will, um, will you know, like en enter the, the uh, Decentraland world and it's very dynamic with um, a lot of things from like, you know, like park to stadium uh, to a tea house or many things that, that people will, will, will build and, and the players can experience. Uh, it's a very dynamic world and our monster will be placed there uh, people probably can build a park with a lot of monster that they can have fun and talk with. Uh, and then they can go to the stadiums and uh, watch uh, the Ethermon's battles. They can also join as the uh, competitors in the, in, in, in the tournament and then play uh, duel with each other and, uh, own, and, and got you know, cheer, cheer up by the um, spectators uh, of, the, of the battle. So I think it what we see is like there's a lot of things that we can we can be on top of that we can also probably can integrate our current adventure more inside the uh, decentralized world uh, so it'd be very it will be very fun and there's a lot of things that we we can do um, at the moment we are testing out the the most simple feature uh, which is the the the, the battle the stadium features and uh, we hope to to bring it to our users uh, in the year 2019 Okay, so I mean, that's very fascinating. So if I understand correctly, if a user is on Decentraland, they can actually pick up monsters from your game as well, perhaps using the native cryptocurrency of Decentraland as well, right? In the future. Is, that's, is, is my that's, understanding correct? That's pro that actually like how it works in terms of like what currency you're going to use. Uh, it's not yet finalized, but um, since okay. mana is, is the currency of this decentral yeah. land, and, uh, I, I think it's very possible that people can use uh, other currency to pick up more. Right now, at the moment, we already allow people to use um, different type of tokens, not just Ether or our own token Emon to, to acquire Monster. Um, by, uh, as, as we partner with Kyber and they have the token swap service, uh, we already allow people to to buy monster with many uh, different like different tokens. So okay. I think it's very possible. Yeah. Right. So is is this already up and running? So you can buy uh, the mons using any token already, or is this something that's part of your roadmap? No, it's, it's, you actually can can do that. So uh, okay. now uh, most of the ERC twenty tokens are supported by us via okay. Kyber token swap okay. integration. Yeah. yeah. So and uh, using Kyber is actually. Uh, pretty simple since you only only need to uh, you know like Im import your address and uh, that um, protocol can actually read your uh, address and then will allow you to almost buy uh, the monster instantly. 
Yeah, no, I, th- I think that's fascinating. And I, and I saw that you have a partnership with Kyber as well, which allows you to basically, uh, you know, like you rightly pointed, use any token uh, because of the token swap. So I think that's, that's quite fascinating what you guys are trying to do. Um, in general, what, how do you guys make money? What is your business model? Yeah, so um, as like uh, many other blockchain games, uh, we... Because, and, and also because we, um, uh, we started out as a small team, um, we always need like, um, like uh, fun to, to build a product un, un, unlike all the big companies there who like, can build a, a very well designed game with like, almost uh, finished the uh, like gameplay when, when, when they release to the market. So um, we um, raise funds using, um, a, using pre-sales. Um, so why people participate in pre-sale is that um, there's there's won't be uh, items there will be uh, some assets that we only sell uh, during pre-sales and people cannot acquire after that. So there's this some incentive uh, for people to um, you, you know like participate in the pre-sales and invest and uh, from that we can have some fun to develop the product. Um, so it's something uh, similar to ICO. Uh, however, it uh, will be um, like the, the the cycle will be much faster uh, since uh, we um, after right after we uh, raise funds from the pre sales of the in game assets we 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 like can um, start building a feature right away and people can expect to experience the game um, themselves um, just one or two months after the pre sales uh, and, and and they can you know like. Um, flip the mon- flip the the assets in in game very fast and and the market will will start to to be very uh, you know like very high up right after that um, and that's how, how how most of blockchain games are, are raising fun now and what also what uh, the approach that we embrace right uh, that makes sense and so now you're in the process of developing another game called Cube Go could you talk a little bit more about this game yeah so. Um, we we recently uh, released like uh, announced that we are will start the pre-sale of a second second in-house game called Cube Go. Um, so this game is actually quite different from uh, what people have seen in um, other blockchain games, which is mostly in collectible games like CryptoKitties or Ethermon or Blockchain Cuties. Uh, some names that people probably have, uh, who play the blockchain game might be familiar with. Um, so the inspiration behind the Cube Go game is from the idea of Lego, when people um, can actually build anything uh, from the materials, which is uh, the cube blocks. Uh, so we, the the ingredients of our games are actually for the small cube blocks of different materials and different colors. Um, so we we create um, many uh, types of uh, materials from like diamond, gold. Uh, to bricks, to plastic, um, and it depends on how people use the colors and materials. They will see uh, their characters uh, differently, and they also will acquire uh, a, a characters with uh, different strength or different tiers. And those characters will have potential of doing different things if um, they use special materials. Um, so basically, we 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 really believe that people uh, should. Uh, be able to express their individuality uh, in the game, and there's some people how, who really like that that um, they, they they can freely do anything. Um, so we allow them to uh, create basically anything uh, from the cube blocks. They can create um, people like human. They can create animals. They can create uh, objects, and basically they can create something that nobody see as a thing, but uh, but they they like it. So they express their own. Uh, their, their, their own, own self in the game um, and actually there's almost no limit in that because the space the space that people who build are actually pretty large and they can build a, even a stick a very long stick in, in the game um, the game the character will be in 3D um, by uh, you know like assembling all the all, all the cubes together and um, that is basically the, the main, main idea of that and uh, after people build their characters they will also have their ownership of those assets because the assets won't be stored in their wallet um, fully controlled by them 
Um, and for those like for those creators, we 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 know that they really um, like you know like care about uh, the ownership of their own art. Um, they don't want people to replicate this. So what we introduced um, another mechanics of the game that we introduced in TubeGo is that people who who create a model, we also have the monopoly of uh, the um, copyright. So if you create a human of uh, some specific, uh, for example, like um, you create um, your uh, characters that, that resemble yourself, then you have the uh, like full uh, right to make a copies of that models uh, in different colors, in different materials, but that shape actually belong to you and nobody can replicate that shape. Those people who want to, to copy that uh, will not be allowed and they have to make at the moment we we are having a, 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 a an algorithm to um, you know like require 15 around 15 percent difference uh, for anyone to who, who want to create something that that looks similar but it has to be uh, at least 15 percent difference um, yeah and and then after you build the characters then you can bring them to uh, battles to different game modes and that's the next step that we we build in the year of 2019 after our pre-sales uh, late uh, 2018 this year. And I'm presuming you're building CubeGo on the Ethereum blockchain as well, right? That's right. So, you know, last year, I think so. I think some people might be familiar with this. So CryptoKitties had actually jammed the Ethereum network. Have you guys faced any problems in terms of... Uh, you know, building on top of the Ethereum blockchain and the scalability problem that uh, the Ethereum blockchain is facing. Yeah, it's it's um it's, it's really a a big uh, challenge uh, to crack right at the moment. Not for only for us, but for many other projects. Um, so like there's a, a time that we launch a feature in Ethereum on and uh, we are like among the top five who, who contribute to the gas fee um, of the whole. Uh, Ethereum network since uh, that features actually um, an anticipated features uh, in our community and people love that. Um, so basically you, you can see that the gas price has been increasing quite a lot since um, the time of CryptoKitties after the, af after the craze uh, of, of, of their launch. Um, and, and then now the gas fees is always around, you know, like two or three uh, way, G way, um, which is considered actually a, a good gas gas free to, to make transaction. Um, so this is one concern that how what we are um, that you know like like concern con concern us when we build any features we need to make it you know simple enough so it doesn't cost a lot of gas fee um, and people will, will will find that you know like affordable to play. Um, it's it's not um, also it's, it's not something that we expect can be solved uh, very uh, soon since uh, Casper won't be expected to release in in around uh, one to two years uh, from now um, and um, we really have to you know like have to adapt quickly uh, for the Ethereum game Ethereum on games and also you know, for CubeGo um, moving forward is that for Ethereum for Ethereum on we already uh, move over to a hybrid kind of hybrid uh, gameplay which which like um, 50, around 50% 50 will be uh, stored on chain like all the assets and how they update the assets once in a while and the battle we already move them off chain so it uh, will be more affordable for people to play um, and also we are trying to to find uh, some you know like solution uh, in the meantime that we we are working with Zilliqa to see how um, to like you know test out um, some scalable scalability solution uh, for the blockchain, um, and I, I think it's not really clear to us that we can uh, address this scalability uh, problem um, in the in the next few months. But um, this is something that we have to always keep in mind when uh, building our products and building features uh, for the for the game. So why not use another blockchain, which is a little bit more scalable? I mean, so Zilliqa is fine. I mean, it, it, but it's, it's not going to go live for a while. So are you, are you open to exploring some of the other blockchains, uh, which may be going live, uh, you know, not immediately, but soon or some other blockchains, which may already be live. Is that something that you're open to? 
So uh, currently there's uh, a few options, right? Like Tron or EOS. Um, um, and of course, Ethereum is still the, the most popular. Um, so I think it's, it's also uh, some trade-off uh, if you move over to, to other blockchain at this moment. Um, what we see from our user is that uh, they are still, um, they're still familiar with Ethereum and um, it's also um, the, you know, like the uh, most stable and uh, such like, how to say the, the, uh, yeah, the most stable blockchain at the moment for decentralized apps and, and also the most, most popular. Um, so it won't be easier to uh, acquire user uh, if, you, if you build product on top of Ethereum network. For other scalability solution, um, what we are trying is, is to do, our approach is quite, is now is quite conservative, um, is, is that we are trying to test out some uh, small like mini games uh, with other, uh, you know, like mm, uh, other public blockchain like Zilliqa um, and see if um, it would be a solution, a, a good scalability solution for, for games in, in specific. Um, seeing, in games, you require uh, to have a lot of microtransactions, and it probably will be very different from um, other industry like finance or. Um, so now we we actually building a, a small mini games and testing out with the with Zilliqa mainnet um, for other uh, public blockchain. I think it's currently it's not really uh, something um, that is urgent for us. We still have time um, if we want to test out other. Uh, solution, but I mean, like uh, we are quite open to to um, other options. Um, at the moment, our focus is still to uh, you know like uh, bring the game uh, to release the the new game and also to improve the current games, the current Ethereum one games we have, and also open uh, expand the network of our alliance to welcome uh, and bring more um, blockchain games on board. Um, so I think. The, the process of the progress of testing out different public blockchain will will be uh, you know like slowly uh, you know like um, will, will be uh, slowly slowly carry out in the probably in the next few months and uh, Zilliqa is the, the first solution that we are doing right now right so you mentioned uh, alliance and I know you're trying to create something bigger than individual games themselves could you talk a little bit more about the Emont alliance and how that fits in with your longer term vision yeah so uh, right from the start we we already plan to to build some something bigger than uh just uh you know like uh game titles like ethereum or cubico um the, our, our vision with the the alliance is to to help uh the blockchain game builders uh, bring the game to the blockchains and also building um, some uh, supporting products and some, some applications around, uh, of, like, around gaming um, using the blockchain technology. Um, at the moment, we, we are still um, doing R&D for our um, uh, SDK uh, for the uh, game developers. Um, however, what we are providing uh, the game developers right now is, is uh, some of the resource that we already uh, build up some of the network that they can tap into uh, when they launch the game. So we have the um, the first member um, called My Crypto Heroes, which is a game developed by a Japanese studio, um, and they they join us um, in the in the month um, in November this year. Um, what we are uh, we what what we see in in longer term will we 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 will. Um, talk to more like small uh, game studios who want to, to, to join the blockchain space. And uh, together we, we will, uh, you know, like um, try to, to, to build up the network. Uh, so we, we don't see this alliance is something that we will, you know, like take a lead in the, in the long term. But once we, we build it uh, big enough with many members, then uh, everyone will benefit uh, from uh, the connection with each other and, and all the, Players and also benefits in terms of like they can use, um, they can play, uh, use different products and play many games with just one tokens, and it's very easy for all the game developers to, um, you know, acquire the u user from from our own resources, and that's what what we see in the future. Um, so what we are going to build is not just game or welcome the 
uh, or, or, or the blockchain games uh, studios. Um, I, I think the gaming industry is big uh, and there's a lot of other products. Uh, for example, like in the traditional um, uh, industry, then you see uh, game streaming services, you see um, many different game platforms and, and, uh, and other stuff uh, like live streaming. Uh, so um, there's a lot of products that we, we can build on top of that. But um, the first one will be to have um, like many different titles uh, for players to, 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 to enjoy, to experience. And uh, we should provide uh, special benefits to our players who, who, are the, uh, who, who use our products. And then we'll be a lot more products um, in uh, using blockchain technology of the Alliance. Okay, so uh, I mean, as far as gaming in the crypto ecosystem is concerned, beyond your game, is there any other game that particularly excites you? So I I think currently um, there's I, I don't want to really uh, you know like many games and uh, each game has has its own uh, its own secret sauce and uh, its own own thing um, and I don't really want to point out any name uh, to be honest. Um, Crypto Kitties is obviously uh, doing a lot of things uh, at, at the moment and they have the Kitty verse and uh, I, I I see that their vision is pretty clear in terms of, you know, like uh, build things around their core products uh, and um, call for many developers in, you know, many countries and they, they usually have host meetup uh, in many countries to, to build up their, their network and uh, their, their ecosystem around um, CryptoKitties. Um, I think there are some, some of the games that uh, has been, um, quite done quite successful pre-sales and uh, probably have promising uh, roadmap and very different uh, from other collectible games. Maybe it's, it could be got un unchained. Uh, it is some game that uh, quite different uh, because they are the first to introduce the uh, trading card game mechanics um, unlike other collectible games. Um, other than that, I think other collectible games are actually quite similar but F but each has its own advantage probably in, in design or in, you know, like game mechanics, gameplay will be very dynamic. Uh, but I mean, like, it's, it's hard to say that how it will turn out in, um, in the next few months or, or in the year of 2019. Uh, but what I believe that all the games uh, should, you know, like, um, cooperate uh, with each other in, in some way or another uh, to help build up um, the, the entire gaming, blockchain gaming space. And also, it will will help to educate user um, to you know like like learn about blockchain technologies and how to use uh, the apps uh, because this is still at the early stage and many people are, are really uh, don't don't really understand uh, the concept of decentralized apps. So, how can our listeners get involved? How can they help you guys for other games okay. in general? I mean, uh, so I know your. Your pre-sale for KubeGo is uh, about to come up very, very soon. Um, is there any other way that some of our listeners can get involved? Because some of our listeners will be, uh, you know, listening to this podcast and, and they will probably visit your, um, your websites. So how, how can they get involved in different parts of the ecosystem that you're building? Yeah, so um, at the moment, we, we already partner with some um, of the uh, projects that, uh, you know, like uh, some, some of the apps, for example, like OpenSea, which is the, the marketplace for digital assets. Uh, we are talking with some other guy, for example, like Oceanity. Uh, they, all, they also build uh, some kind of uh, marketplace, but um, in a different way, in, in, very, very, in their very own way. Um, and also there's uh, some, like there's Kyber Network, uh, who are doing uh, payment solutions, uh, protocol, payment pro protocol. Uh, so I think there's a lot of projects and um, out there that can really have something in common uh, with um, what we are building, which is gaming. And um, I, I mean, even for other uh, games, uh, blockchain games uh, developer there, um, I think how we can cooperate is that um, one of the, one of the, you know, I'm, biggest advantage of blockchain technology when it comes to gaming is that it allows for interoperability uh, across games. Uh, so we, we have seen some of the project has um, 
allow different like uh, allow other games are set to ent- enter the game's wall and then for players it's it's a win 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 uh thing because they they can um you know like like play uh, like e- easily switch to other game and and try out the games and and uh if they they like the game then they can they can stay um so i think it depends on you know like what they are building but um but there's m- many collaborative um you know like 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 way that uh, project can can do together and yeah i think for listener um whatever you building then um i i think that we can definitely discuss uh to to see what we have in common and then how we how we can collaborate in terms of marketing in terms of uh educate um in in terms of educating our users um on using dapps or in terms of you know like product developments and how we can uh you know like build a better product together awesome so before we wrap up is there anything that you would like to talk about that we may not have covered in this interview yeah um i think this um an entire ecosystem is still something new so um i mean there's a lot of thing that uh we can we can discuss in in terms of you know, the the futures of the decentralized apps and how this thing can uh go mainstream in the future um but i think this is some you know like basic knowledge that um i really want to cover in the interview that uh people uh, and and really want i hope that some of the um you know cryptocurrency and uh traders or those people who who want to learn about cryptocurrency and blockchain technology and decentralized apps um can pick up some of the the apps that they like and then um you know try out to learn about the rising technologies and uh, don't miss out on 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 something very interesting awesome i think that's a great note to end the interview on nedrick thank you so much for coming on the show thank you very much tushra if you enjoyed this me. episode please subscribe to this podcast on itunes google play soundcloud or wherever you listen to podcasts like us on facebook twitter linkedin and telegram and subscribe to our newsletter on decrypt.asia this is your host tushar thank you for listening